morning, we welcome everyone to St. Mark's United Methodist Church. We have a couple of announcements. First of all, the United Methodist Women's Circle Meeting will be this Thursday, November 5th at 1 o'clock in the sanctuary. And also the Boy Scouts will be selling their uh, wreaths, Christmas wreaths once again uh, this year. Today we'll be having uh, All Saints Day and also Communion. Uh, if you notice the little communion uh, cups that we gave out, there's two little uh, lids to it. The first top lid is for the bread, and the second is for the, uh, for the wine or the juice. Uh, for those at home, we have communion the first Sunday of the month, so you may want to have some grape juice and bread and have communion with us. And if you like our worship service, and although you can't be here, if you would share that with someone, we would greatly appreciate that. Are there any other announcements? If not, let us prepare our hearts to worship the Lord our God. Let's join together in the responsive call to worship. Ordinary saints offering simple gifts. A word of counsel in our need and embraced when the clouds hover near, a listening ear for long-buried memories, saints in our midst, shedding light on our path, sprinkling hope through our days, seeking joy in our hearts. Praise God for saints beyond time. Praise God for saints who walk beside us. Let's join together in singing our opening hymn of praise, Faith of Our Fathers. Please stand. together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your son Christ our Lord grant us to follow your holy saints and all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those unspeakable joys which you have prepared for those who sincerely love you we pray father for peace throughout the world especially our nation especially Philadelphia we pray for peace we also pray for peace and understanding on Tuesday as we come and vote for a new president and for elected officials. May you be with us. 
As we come and worship this morning, we pray for those who cannot be with us, and we pray for those that are sick and for those who are at home that are in need of prayer. We lift up our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, we will remember those who are no longer with us, who passed away this past year. On the altar, we have carnations in loving memory of those individuals. The first person we like to be in prayer, uh, we lift up Carol Blum. Our husband Leonard is with us this morning. They're very active, have been active in our church, and Leonard is very uh, active in uh, our Bible study on Friday morning. So we. Lift up Carol Blum. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for Alice Chris Kuola. We lift her up in prayer. She was one of our seniors and was active in our church when she was younger. We lift her up in prayer. We pray for Carla Hassenritter. We lift her up in prayer. She was a French teacher for many, many years. Also, she was a Fulbright scholar, and um, she was a member of St. Andrew's United Methodist Church in Havertown. And then when that church closed, she came here. We lift Carla up in prayer. Lord, hear our prayers. We also pray for Edna Ortu Oltura Alano, uh, her husband Frank. They were members here at our church. We lift her up in prayer. Let us pray. Amen. We lift up H. David Reed. Uh, he and his wife Norma uh, moved away about two years ago in a retirement. 55 plus community and we lift them up. They're very active here at the church. Let us pray Amen we lift up Margaret Rust uh, her husband Robert they were very active here in our church one of our seniors who uh, passed away let us pray Amen. Uh, Roger Taylor, his wife Lisa. Uh, Lisa moved up to Connecticut and uh, Lisa was very active in the choir and Roger uh, always came out with their, uh, their dog during um, when we would have uh, prayer for the animals and they had a very large dogs that they had and Roger was a person of good, good humor and a person that loved to be with people. Let us pray. Amen. And now let us turn to our bulletin as we pray for the saints together. We bless your holy name, O God, for all your servants who have finished their journey. Now rest from their labors. Give us grace to follow the example of their steadfastness and faithfulness to your honor and glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning is from the first letter of John, chapter 3, verses 1 to 3. See what great love the Father has lavished on us. We should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it does not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when Christ appears, we shall be like him, 
for we shall see him as he is. All who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we study our scripture lesson this morning, we lift up our hearts and we pray for the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us as children of God. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we look at our scripture lesson for today, for All Saints Day, in chapter 3, it talks about being children of of God. See what love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. It goes on to say in Scripture that those of the world do not know God, but once a person enters into that relationship with Jesus Christ, we become children of God. For we will be purified, and we will be pure, and this will be our hope. John Wesley used this scripture, 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 to 3, in one of his sermons entitled, Dealing with the New Birth. For John Wesley, the possibility not to sin comes only from being born into the reality of a spiritual life in God. This is sermon 19 that he wrote. The great privilege of those that are born of God, Wesley teaches, that is, the new birth, the Holy Spirit, brings about great inward changes which affects the entire manner of our existence. Before new birth, we do not possess spiritual senses, and we live as though under a thick veil that separates us from God. In this state, we have no means to hear God's voice or follow it, which results in a community committing sins. In new birth, the eyes of our understanding are now open, and we see it in that is invisible. We become able to receive the divine seed of the spirit that God continually breathes into us and to respond to God through faith and love and prayer. Hence, we become able to hear God's voice, obey God, and thus refrain from it. This morning, we remember All Saints Day in our church. All those that have gone and passed away and those that are living are all saints. And as we come and worship this morning, we give praise to those who have been part of building the church over these past 2,000 years. It is a day to remember and honor those who believe, believers that have passed away. And we set aside this day to remember their examples of faith, character, love, and service. And this is also the day when we remind ourselves that we are called to be saints also. We are a saint as well. The word saint simply means set apart for a special purpose. And I wanna talk about that for a moment, being set aside for a special purpose. I want to tell the story of a man named Will Smith, not the actor, but an individual who was serving in the Navy, and he and his wife had a child named Olivia. It was toward, towards the end of his tour of serving our country that his wife told him that she no longer wanted to be married and that she didn't want to raise their daughter. And so he left the Navy, and with his GI Bill, he raised as a single parent this little baby, Olivia, he went to Bowdoin College in New England, and for the next four years on the GI Bill, and also working as a sextant at night in the college, bringing the baby along with him in a stroller, he was able to complete his degree. But it was also during this time that he reevaluated his life, and during a worship service, he came and accepted Christ as Lord and Savior in his life. 
What is so interesting that on the day he graduated from Bowdoin College, many of the students know that, knew that he was a single parent and the president of the university or college, as he came to get his degree said, we grant this degree to Will and Olivia. As he carried this child up to receive his degree, the whole audience stood, the class stood, and they all clapped. You see, he knew that he was loved by God, and even though his marriage failed, he was a single parent, it was through the church and through his new Christian faith that he was able to raise his daughter. And in the year 2015, after many years when he was an elderly man, he was dying of cancer, his daughter came home and took care of him to his, to his dying days. You see, many times in life, we, we feel defeated. There's another story of a young man who was, wanted to be in the NFL, National Football League. And his whole life was centered around football, in college. Well, he was drafted by several professional teams only to be cut before the season began. He was desperate. He thought, my, my life has no meaning. All I know is football. And then one of his fellow football players, who also was cut and didn't have his dreams fulfilled in the NFL, committed suicide. As he went to his room one night and he was contemplating, what is my future? He opened his Bible and he saw, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. It was from this that he changed his course. He became a mo motivational speaker and a Christian speaker throughout the country. You know, on this All Saints Day, it is important for us to remember those that are before us. But the most critical part of our scripture lesson this morning is the world that does not know God. A world that does not know God. And I am so worried that as we go into the future, that as the Christian church, we need to preach the message and for the world to get to know Jesus Christ. And so as we worship this morning, we give thanks to have gone before us in heaven. And we also give thanks for you that are here. You see, our greatest hour is now. It is now that we need to reach out with God's word. And what if a loving father has plans to give you a destiny of joy and purpose far beyond anything you can imagine? Wouldn't you give your hope to face any circumstances in life? That's exactly what God wants for each and every one of us. You can have a newfound life with a new identity, a new destiny, and a new hope. It all begins with trusting God as your loving Father. You see, this is the true path of finding a newfound life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our scripture lesson this morning. And as we come and as we prepare for Holy Communion, as we partake of the bread and the cup, let us remember the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Be with us this day, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, if you would turn to the insert uh, for Holy Communion. I just want to remind you as you pick up your little cup, there are two tabs on the top. The first tab was for taking the bread, and then the second tab, if you would open it, was partaking of, uh, of the juice. Let us begin. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Blessed are you, God of creation and all beginnings, God of Abraham and Sarah, God of Miriam and Moses, God of Joshua and Deborah, God of Ruth and David, 
God of priests and prophets, God of Mary and Joseph, God of apostles and martyrs, God of our mother, mothers and fathers, God of our children and all generations. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of the suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. When the night in which he gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, take eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, and gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ that we may be for the world the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. Renew our communion with all your saints, especially those whom we name before you, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses. Strengthen us to run with perseverance. The race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, by your spirit make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes for his final, final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now let us pray as Jesus taught his disciples to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, take the bread and eat in remembrance of Jesus Christ. Take and drink in remembrance of our word. Our next hymn is Come to Us to Become to Us the Living Bread.
You have given yourself to us, Lord. Now we give ourselves to others. Your love has made us a new people. As a people of love, we will serve you with joy. Your glory has filled our hearts. Help us to glorify you in all things. Amen. Go in peace.